Hey, welcome to EMS Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman. Guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of the Monday Minutes. Listen, um, we are rounding out uh, the Monday Minutes, the quick study uh, guide video series here. We've got maybe two more after this. We've got abdominal trauma today I'm going to cover, and then we're going to get into extremity trauma. And that's going to probably be two sessions because it's kind of a, a bigger section than this. Um, but guys, listen, it's, it's not the entire uh, quick study guide because I'm trying to cover just the things that are key for you to know. There's more of this quick study guide talking about um, uh, patient assessment stuff, uh, documentation, things like that, that isn't really necessarily going to be absolutely on the on an exam, so I'm kind of leaving that out of the Monday minutes as far as a quick study guide goes. So just keep that in mind, um, guys. I wish and I hope you will consider joining me over at TurboMedic. It is an insider membership there, guys. It's a free membership that I encourage you to join me. Um, just go to emsseo.com forward slash insider. There are gigabytes of digital content you can use to help improve your knowledge and pass exams, including a few practice exams, hours of audio and video, and of course, exclusive access to the Facebook group there. So um, join me there. Again, it's a free membership, and uh, you can get some more content there to help you be, be a better EMS professional. Now, guys, of course, I always like to start out these videos asking why this is important, right? Because I don't want you to think this stuff is just for exams. Okay, and as we go on, even after the quick study guide stuff is done and I keep doing Monday Minutes, I'm going to be talking about things that are important for you to build your knowledge base, to make better better clinical decisions, to write better reports, right? And of course, it's going to be key information that will help you pass exams as well. All right, so it all kind of ties in together. So my hope is that if you, something doesn't click here for you, you don't quite understand it, that you'll open up your textbook, you'll use a resource like TurboMedic, and go ahead and take advantage of that stuff. Okay, so let's get into today, guys. Again, talking about abdominal trauma. And, you know, this region, guys, very hard for us to identify problems, right? Difficult to assess. All right, and a lot of times when we have abdominal trauma injuries, it is unrecognized for us. All right, but it's also a big part and a big cause of death in trauma patients because we don't see it, we don't recognize it. Okay, and this is why transport to a trauma center is your patient's best bet. Okay, we talk about mechanism of injury with this type of stuff, guys. And just want to kind of talk a little bit about um, blunt trauma, right? And NVAs are probably the most uh, biggest cause for blunt trauma. You get those compression injuries where you have, you know, organs of the abdomen and they get crushed between solid objects, right? The steering wheel and the seat, okay? Um, you get shearing energy, uh, injuries where you get rupture of solid organs tearing of vessels and tearing of ligaments, penetrating injuries like stabbings, gunshot wounds, impaled objects. And when you think about penetrating injuries to the abdomen, guys, think about the intestine because the intestine is the most frequently injured organ in penetrating trauma. And if you have an impaled object, you don't want to remove it out in the field. Try to stabilize it and transport it. Okay, sometimes you might have to remove part of an object in order to transport them. Okay, follow your local guidelines, what you, what you can or cannot do with impaled objects. But the common thinking is that you're not going to remove that impaled object. Okay, um, solid organ injuries, right? This can lead to shock, right? You get a lot of blood lost into the abdominal cavity. And this is actually, when you think about this, think about... Um, unexplained shock. You can't figure out why this traumatic patient is going into shock, okay? And your most reliable indicator is because you've got intra-abdominal bleeding going on, right? The liver and the spleen are your primary uh, kind of uh, culprits here. They're going to bleed the most and the most commonly injured ones. And then, of course, you've got blood and bile that can escape that can cause shock and, and irritation to the peritoneal 
area as well. And think about injury to the spleen, something they call sign. And this is where you can have a patient complaining of pain to their left shoulder. They might even be complaining of pain to their um, spleen area, right? They can be just complaining of pain to their to their left shoulder. Right? So keep that type of stuff in mind. All right, now we talk about other injury areas, right? Hollow organs, for instance, okay? These can release contents like acids, enzymes, bacteria, okay? That can lead to sepsis, you know, abscess formations. You're going to have pain, tenderness, guarding, rigidity, uh, even fever, some distension as well. But it's, distension is probably more of a later sign. You might see that more when it comes to looking at um, uh, solid organs where you get the blood building up, okay? Guys, you you got to think about injury as well to think that the pelvic organ area, okay? And you're going to see injuries there when you have severe retroperitoneal hemorrhage there. And believe it or not, you've got a pretty decent rate of mortality, up to almost 19%. With pelvic injuries, okay, and then of course we have a vascular injuries as well. Injury to vascular structures, um, eviscerations. Uh, you get major, major potential for massive uh, hemorrhage when you talk about vascular structures. Okay, Hypo lead to hypovolemia. Inferior vena cava can be injured. Renal areas can be mesentric. Um, iliac arteries and veins, all this stuff can bleed very, very quickly and then lead to that hemorrhage and hypovolemia. So keep that in mind. Now, eviscerations, you know, most protocols are going to tell you don't don't put the organs back in, right? That's going to cause for infection, things like that. But depending upon protocol, the most common one is you're going to cover it with a moist sterile dressing and then pad that with dry dressings okay so though that's kind of common um you know treatment for uh, evisceration but again you're going to follow local guidelines when it comes to that as well all right so real quick guys i know not a lot to go on but i think the biggest takeaway for what we think about abdominal trauma is that we don't recognize it in the field and that transport your best bet but knowing some of these things can kind of lead you along the path that it might be an abdominal injury going on. Again, especially when we're talking about unexplained shock in a trauma patient. Okay? All right, guys, that's it for me. Again, go check out TurboMedic. Get yourself an insider membership there. It is free. I don't think you will regret joining me there. Again, it's at emsstocom forward slash insider. And guys, please be sure to connect with me on social media. You can get me on social media at emssafe on both Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow me on Facebook at the EMS Professional there. And of course, if you have some minutes of your own, you want to talk about something or see a, a uh, presentation on something you're struggling with or you think is popular in EMS, let me know. Send me your minutes. It's at contact at emsofficehours.com. And be sure, go check out emsofficehours.com for other Monday Minutes, other study help, and, of course, the podcast. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours Monday Minutes. Stay tuned.